to man. Peyton Manning stepping out. It's the Zion Show. Pass is caught by Joe. NC State rolls into Memorial Stadium ranked 23rd in the nation. Knowing a win over Clemson keeps the Wolfpack in control of the Atlantic Division. But the Clemson Tigers have won six straight games in this series. They are favored here again this afternoon. It's the Wolfpack of NC State and the Clemson Tigers. One of the great traditions in all of college football is the Clemson Tigers come in, rub the rock, and head into Death Valley. You know, the, you mentioned Military Appreciation Day, and the coaches of Clemson are certainly really into this, and you can tell it by the fact that all of them are wearing camo pants today to signify that they're thinking about the men and women who serve our country. A look at Marcus Gilchrist of Clemson. And, folks, he's dangerous. He's back to return and kicking off. Josh Chikowski of NC State, strong leg. Been around a long time. Out of those 53 kicks, only four touchbacks. That's because of his confidence in the cover team. Well, since Andre Paul became the, deep, the uh, special teams coordinator here, 10 kick returns for touchdowns over four years for Clemson. Gilchrist takes this one at the five. Actually, it was taken away from Gilchrist. And up to the 25-yard line, that's where Clemson will start. Marquan Jones with the return. Our CPI security starting lineups. Harper, Hopkins, McNeil, Jones, and Allen. Allen's on that John Mackey watch list. Offensive line is big and strong. Harrison Smith, Freeman, McLean, and Walker. Harrison is the bell cow there, all ACC, NFL-type tackle. And there is your... Starting quarterback, Kyle Parker, 6'1", 200-pound sophomore. Had a tough day at Boston College last Saturday, and I am told we'll see Todd Ford at quarterback as well. Here's the pitch back to Harper, and Harper on the left side has a nice game on first down. It'll bring up second down and six. Defensively for NC State, Reese Camp, Maggio, Sweezy, Akini. That's your defensive line. They're active, and this group of linebackers is solid with Cole, Irving, and Manning. And Cole is big time, and so is Irving. All ACC, Wilson, Bishop, Wolf, Hammerson, young but aggressive. Second down and six. Operat close to a first down. It'll be about three yards short. It'll be up third down and imaginable three yards. Tim, already we see part of what the game plan is for Dabo Sweeney's offense is to run the football. They want to pound the attack. Harper, a big back, 240 pounds. They want to run him in between the tackles, get him out on the edge, wear down this front seven for NC State. Offensive line goes 325, 315, 290, 330, and 310. They need three on third down. McNeil in motion. Parker's first pass of the game over the middle complete. This is McNeil. He's got the first and then some. Ball loose. And it looked like Kyle Parker got it back, but that'll take him away from the first down that they had. Boy, initially a great job here by Bryce McNeil. Zone buster. He just hooks up in the zone. Parker on the same page, puts the ball on him. Now the young man trying to get a little extra yardage does not take care of the football. It looked like Terrell Manning ripped the ball out, and then Kyle Parker realizing when he recovered it, he was short of the first down, tried to scoot forward and pick up the first down, Great but could play. not get there. How about the, the Wolfpack had him wrapped, and Manning came and just stripped. So that brings on Dawson Zimmerman to punt. And T.J. Graham is deep for NC State. They'll review this play, but believe me, I don't see any video evidence to overturn it. Now the quarterback, quarterback and receiver on the same page. McNeil does an outstanding job. He certainly put the football away and made a football move is what the officials are looking for. But they're going to look, Arch, to see if his knee was down before that ball came loose. And it is a bang-bang play. Take another look. After further review, the call on the field has been confirmed. Fourth down. So that view right there told you his knee was not down when the ball came loose. Dabo Sweeney just shakes his head. So now we'll see Zimmerman. You see his healthy numbers, 38 punts. 
with a really good average. T.J. Graham is dangerous. I doubt if they'll kick to him today. They kick away from him, and he gets an NC State bounce up to about the 39-yard line. We'll see where they mark it. They'll actually mark it across the 40 to the 42. A 27-yard punt. CPI security starting lineup for the offense of NC State. Haynes, Gentry, Williams, Spencer, and Bryan, but we're told it may not be Haynes. It may be Mustafa Green behind this big offensive line. For Miglia, Wallace, Wentz, Allen, and Mattis. Your quarterback, Russell Wilson. And Mustafa Green is the starting tailback. Here he is. To the 46 yard line. Mustafa Green is a true freshman, was the ACC player of the week for that game against Cincinnati. Defensively, Clemson is banged up and beaten down. Bowers, Thompson, Jenkins, and Branch across the front. Miguel Chavis is out. He's got a bad foot. Linebackers, Christian, Hawkins, and May. Daniel Andrews is banged up and will not play today at linebacker. In the secondary, Gilchrist, McDaniel, Hall, and Brewer. Healthy back there. And experienced. Second down, call it six. Wilson rolls out of the pocket, tries to throw, and he does to his tight end, Bryan. So George Bryan makes his 23rd reception of the year. Well, they get the first part of this done. Naquan Bowers goes back to the inside, and that's the killer move. You cannot slide back to the inside against Wilson because he will buy time, extend the play, and an outstanding one-handed grab by Brian sliding with his quarterback as he skates out of the pocket. Tell you, Dave, I'm excited to see this matchup of tight ends. George Bryan of NC State, Mackey watch list as they throw it out and have it complete to Spencer. And Spencer is close to a first down, depending on where they mark it. But we're talking about George Bryan, who has 23 receptions now for NC State. He's a Mackey watch list guy, all ACC, 40 receptions last year. And of course, for Clemson, you've got Dwayne Allen, and he too is a go to guy. Yeah, in fact, Dwayne Allen leads Clemson in receiving, so two outstanding tight ends today. Russell throws in the flats, wide open. It's complete out there to Green, and Green has another first down for the pack. He takes it all the way down inside the 15, and the Wolfpack is on the move. Wilson does an outstanding job of putting his feet in the ground and throwing it. He doesn't waste a lot of time. Look how quickly the ball comes out. He's an outstanding reader of coverage, does a good job of knowing when to pull it down, extend the play, but also understands timing and when he needs to put that right foot in the ground and drive the ball out of there. Got out there, there were no screen pass principles of that play, just got him out in the flats. Here's Green again, straight ahead. Inside the 10. Mustafa Green, number 33 there, had an outstanding day on Thursday night a week ago against Florida State. Dean Haynes went down with a concussion, and the freshman stepped in, and he was punishing runner, ran for 70, 76 yards on the night on 17 carries, but many of his runs between the tackles with some ferocity. NC State would like to improve these numbers, get more touchdowns, be more efficient in the red zone. Wilson looks into the end zone. They've got him hemmed in and he throws it away. But how about this hurry up offense by NC State? Not so much hurry up, but they aren't really giving them a lot of chance to change personnel, no huddle, getting them up to the line, just trying to milk the clock. Dana Bible and Tom O'Brien really trying to force the tempo of this game early. Tim, you're exactly right. The key to that is to prevent any type of substitution. What Dana Bible wants to do is get his personnel on the field for NC State and then try to lock you into a certain personnel grouping and then take advantage of that by play calling. Now, just as we say that, they do huddle up, they take more time here, and now they're going to take a timeout. They want to be more efficient in this red zone. This is where they've struggled. They want to get touchdowns on the board, not field goals, and they want to talk about it. We'll be back right after this. Here's a look at Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator, looking good. He's healthy, and I'll tell you this, one heck of a football coach. Third down and six. Had him overthrown, pass interference, a lot of contact, and Spencer drew the flag. Oh, and Spencer interfered with. So that'll be half the distance. Hawkins was bumping and grinding all the way. 
Yeah, great design here as they get Owen Spencer, the wide receiver, locked on Hawkins, the linebacker. And Hawkins just wrapped his arms around his waist as he was trying to go by him around the goal line. They're going to decide where to mark this. I forgot they had a loss. I thought. Pass interference, 42 of the defense. That penalty places the ball at the two yard line from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So it'll be placed at that two. You got three receivers left. And you see Spencer just trying to get over the top. And uh, like I said, Hawkins wrapped the arm around the waist. And if, if you impede the receiver, if you don't stand your ground, you step and to impede the receiver, then they'll flag that. Pretty easy call there. Well, the crowd didn't like it, and Davo Swinney didn't like it. Our referee today, Jack Childress, and I can tell you he is a great one. Third down. And touchdown, NC State. Mustafa Green. On first and goal, Mustafa Green takes it in. And the Wolfpack on the board. So often the guy that's forgotten in coverage, Tim, is the faking back. They faked the little stretch play to Mustafa Green in the flat. No one there from Clemson to pick him up. And uh, Russell Wilson sees it and just dumps it to him real quick to get him in the end zone. So the pass interference play, a critical play, takes it down to the two. Then on first and goal from the two, the touchdown to Mustafa Green. And now Josh Chukowski tries to add this extra point. It's good. NC State 7, Clemson nothing. Just underway at Death Valley. This game has been called the Textile Bowl since 1981, an industry that has had a major impact in both states. The NC State College of Textiles is the largest of its kind in the United States, offering one of only two accredited textile engineering programs in the country. The College of Textiles produces more than half of the textile graduates in the entire United States each year. Now Clemson is 21 and 9 all time in the Textile Bowl. And right now, NC State making an impact. There's a return of 12 yards by Marcus Gilchrist. And once again, Clemson will start with a short field. There's your scoring drive, seven plays, 58 yards, two minutes and 32 seconds. The penalty was the key there, the pass interference, which took it down to the three yard line. Yeah, two big plays by Russell Wilson in a scrambled out, found Brian the tight end for a big play to extend the drive and then found Green in the flat on a hot read which got him inside the red zone. So two outstanding plays for the quarterback. First down Tigers. Parker hands to Jamie Harper. Harper trimmed down his sophomore season and got quicker. He has great feet for a big guy, He's six feet, 235 pounds, junior out of Jacksonville, Florida. Extremely talented kid, can do a lot of things for his He's outstanding in the pass protection scheme. He also is a, a tremendous receiver out of the backfield. Thompson needs seven on second down. Get it out to McNeil. McNeil gets a block on the corner. Be sure to the first down by about three yards. But a nice pickup by Bryce McNeil. Well, he got a good block. You mentioned it. Uh, Nuke Hopkins on the outside. DeAndre Hopkins on the outside does an outstanding job of peeling back. Watch number six now. Peel back and get the block right there. That provided McNeil a little room on the edge to get this into a third down and manageable situation. So it'll be third down and four. See the third down conversions only 37 percent. That's because they haven't been getting manageable distances. It's been third and long most of the time this year for Clemson. And then NC State's number one in the ACC on third down. Third and four got the first Jones spins his way up to the 30 yard line tackled by Monk and Wilson. Another zone coverage from NC State in a third and medium situation that's three to six yards remember McNeil caught the one in the first drive and fumbled this time an outstanding job of Jones finding the hole in the zone and Kyle Parker's on the money all right how about this Todd Boyd comes in Kyle Parker goes out so we've got a new quarterback for Clemson Parker had a pretty nice start here and that was a big first down pass but here's Boyd fakes to McNeil and takes it off the left tackle, not a whole lot there. He runs right into Brian Slay and Nate Irving. They 
We're going to get the flip flop of quarterbacks here a little bit. We, we talked to Billy Napier, offensive coordinator at Clemson yesterday, and he talked about Taj Boyd maybe coming in, 235 pounder now, and providing some run game out of that zone read look. That time just hit it straight ahead. Clemson strives to be balanced offensively. Definitely mixing runs with pass, and now they're even changing quarterbacks. So we'll keep an eye on that all day. Second down and eight as Parker comes back in. Parker again has McNeil. He's got space. Cross midfield into NC State territory. Earl Wolfs finally made the tackle, but Bryce McNeil off to a great start for the Tigers. Well, again, a great read by McNeil. Both linebackers to the wide side of the field come after Parker. It's a zone blitz from the linebackers. McNeil hooks in the hole where the linebackers used to be, and Parker's right on the money with the throw. Parker brings him right back up to the line of scrimmage on first and ten. for Harper to run. And again it's Earl Wolf. Earl Wolf is the second leading tackler for NC State. He is a run support guy and makes the tackle here. Nice job by Dalton Freeman to redirect. Look at this hole right here. I think I think we get Mike Hogwood through that hole right there Tim. <laughs> and a good job of Jamie Harper finding the hole but a good job by Dalton Freeman there the center to provide the hole for Harper. He saw Irving blitzing took him out of the hole and provided the crease. This is a go down partner. This is second and three. And again it's Harper. That one surprises me a little bit. Back to the 40. Earl Manning makes the stop. I'm going down to Mike Hogwood so he can defend himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have never made it through that hole. Hey Tim and Arch, I want to tell you, there's a different attitude from Kyle Parker today and what we saw last week on the sidelines. He's showing great leadership. And so far in his throws, at least from down here, he has been on the money. He's playing with confidence today, which is a credit to him after the game he had last week. I agree with you, Mike. And when we sat down with Dabo Swinney yesterday, the first thing he said is this kid's a competitor. He's done a lot here and I would be shocked if he didn't have a great game today. Third down complete to the tight end Allen. So both tight ends now have a catch today for both teams. Allen picks up the first down. It's a gain of 10. They move the chains. A well, good job of picking up the initial protection gets a good hit from the backside by Manning. But they are wearing this area out right here between the two linebackers. Again, Allen reads the coverage, hooks up between Cole and Irving, and Parker is on the money. They have something going right there, Tim, on that wide side of the field between the two linebackers. See the current drive, and how about these numbers? Kyle Parker, four for four for 40 yards. I'd say it's a pretty good start. And a sophomore has him back up to the line of scrimmage on first and ten. Play action. Looking deep. Going for it all. In the corner. Surprise, there's no flag there. McNeil was covered up. CJ Wilson on the coverage. Tried to put Bryce McNeil up the bat on just a jump ball. He had Dwayne Allen wide open over the middle of the field. And I think this is one. I think this is what CJ will say. No, no, there's no pass interference. No, there. I'm going to tell you something, partner. That's a great, that's great coverage. He looked back. He has every right to go for that ball. I think this was a play where Kyle Parker thought he was going to have pressure and just hung it up, and he didn't have the pressure. Side judge and back judge all over that made the proper call. Swing pass out quickly. Here's Jones, and again, Jones goes out of bounds inside to the 21 yard line, knocked out there by Wolf. So five for six now for Parker. Great start and McNeil and Jones really making a difference at wideout. Well you love the way they're uh, changing up the play calling where the throws are going wide in the middle running the football. So it's a nice mix right now for Billy Napier. Third down and short. Here's Harper. Good cut. Move the chains, another first down. Again, it's Wolf on the tackle. NC State secondary was shredded quite often last year. Now the secondary is littered with underclassmen and continues to improve. Well, another good job up front by that offensive front, in particular, Dalton Freeman, the sophomore center. He's an outstanding player. He picked up Irving blitzing again to provide the hole. 
See the red zone efficiency of the Tigers. Parker again goes to the corner. Incomplete intended for DeAndre Hopkins number six. Good coverage once again by C.J. Wilson. I tell you this not, these are young receivers here at Clemson and they're still learning how to play the game. Hopkins is a guy they're extremely excited about right there number six Duke Hopkins tremendous player but he's young he's a true freshman and they're really struggling to adjust to the football. Uh, we saw it on McNeil the throw to McNeil on the, the jump ball a few plays ago and here McNeil a uh, very good job by Hopkins adjusting the ball. Looking at that Geico scoreboard how about Virginia. Trailing Duke 14 to 7. Kyle Harper. Loses the football. And Clemson gets it back. That ball just fell out of Parker's hands. And now there's a scrum. And down at the bottom of that pile, who knows what will happen. Look at the striped shirts trying to get in there. Clemson certainly had the ball first. But look at this now. Arch, I've been to the bottom of those piles. I know what happens in there. But you know what? I was smart enough to stay out of those bad boys. I didn't get in there. <laughs> those guys are going to earn their pay today. Good effort. And Clemson does come up with it. You know, Tim, you and I both played this game, and, and when it gets chilly outside, the ball gets a little bit slicker, and it's easier to get the ball out. And uh, this is a classic example. Good job of the NC State getting a hand on the ball right there. Did a good job of getting his hand on the football. Looks like Look a bar of soap here now. Yeah, Earl Wolf looked like he got a hand on the ball as Kyle slipped up in the pocket. Roderick McDowell came up with it somehow at the bottom. Here are the turnovers. Well, Clemson has tried to correct it. Last week they were really unfocused. Clemson trying to protect the ball today, but Parker just flat out put it on the on the field. And there's a penalty, and now the Boo Birds come out. Yeah. Delay of game, 11, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. That's a mental mistake, and Dabo Swinney, who was all over him last weekend, now to, it's okay, settle down, it's okay. And Kyle Parker says he's having trouble getting the signals. Well, it's, it, the problem there was you went no back, so you've got to set your protection. You only have five guys to protect with, and and NC State was coming with six, so you needed to direct your protection a certain way, and the clock ran out on Kyle Parker. Well, the play clock's down to seven again. Just gets it off. Looks to the end zone. Throws. Probably should have been caught. McNeil almost had it. Well, it looked like Earl Wolf might have gotten a hand in. Earl Wolf, the safety. Good move by McNeil to get back to the inside. And boy, Wolf whiffed on it, and it was just enough to distract McNeil. And the ball actually hits McNeil in the hand or the knee as it goes by Wolf's hand. So a missed opportunity there for Clemson. This is a 37 yard attempt by Richard Jackson, who's making his first attempt here for the season. And he is wide right. Well, last week. They had all kinds of problems with the kicking game with Catton Zero. So Richard Jackson gets the call today, but I think that was more the snap than the kick. We'll be back. Well, it stays at 7 0 after an almost touchdown and almost field goal. Excellent job by Earl Wolf, the safety. Watch the right hand just get a piece of the ball right there to redirect it. And a low snap here Tim but an excellent job of getting the ball down but that'll distract the kicker when the ball's on the ground like that. Yeah way the quarterback made a nice pickup of the ball and almost got it down in time for the rhythm to continue but he had to push it just a little bit right timing just a little bit off as T.J. Graham returns that ball to the 24 yard line. Let's go downstairs Michael and, and Tim Richard Jackson. I'll tell you what this guy has hung with it all year long. He's a graduate student. He lost his job. He was the kicker last year lost his job in preseason camp but has stayed positive stayed positive. Today is his chance to get it back. Well, Chandler Catton zero really struggled last week as you know he had those two missed field goals also missed a critical play against Auburn when Clemson almost and probably should have beaten Auburn. That catch by Brian another first down. 
Here you go, Arch. Take a look at the last drive by NC State. It was efficient. Yeah, watch the quarterback. I mean, Russell Wilson, obviously the trigger guy. This does an outstanding job of understanding what he has. He extends the play, gets the ball to Brian. Quick throw to, to Green in the flat twice for, for, uh, for a touchdown and a first down. Wilson's throwing well. Here he has it complete to TJ Graham, and he has another first down. Two plays, two first downs. Stop made by Brandon May. Another good throw on the deep curl route. Watch him push off, get the DB to roll out of there, and then come back to your quarterback. Good job by Graham. Got to come off the football. So often you see receivers jogging off the ball. Graham pushed the defender off and then came back to the quarterback. Tigers brought back six starters from last year's defense. These guys can run and have one of the nation's top D's last year, one of the best in the league now. But there's a pass for one yard to Brian, the tight end, incomplete. Tim, excellent job this time by Clemson's pass rush. We talked about trying to keep Russell Wilson hemmed in, but this time Clemson does a good job. If he's going to escape, they want to escape and lose ground. They don't want him going towards the line of scrimmage or vertical to the horizontal to the line of scrimmage. They want him losing ground. That time they forced him back. He had to throw an errant throw to the sideline. Up second down and ten as James Washington comes into the ball game. And a flag down on NC State. Ball start. 64 of the offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. We talked with Kevin Steele, defensive coordinator for Clemson yesterday, and he talked about NC State when they get in behind the chains, they have a pretty good idea what they're going to see. So this is an opportunity for for that defense. There's Kevin Steele right there. Outstanding defensive coach right there to find a way to get after Russell Wilson. James Washington is usually a third down back. He comes in here on the situation that is long. Jarvis Williams makes the catch, but again, it just gets back to the original line of scrimmage. They add a yard. So it'll bring up third down and nine, a long nine. This is a defensive group that if they do a, a lot of complicated things in the secondary here where they match up. Kevin Steele talks about we don't cover grass here, we cover players, but it's a zone concept, yet it looks like man coverage to the quarterback. Third down and eight, they'll call it. Crowd comes to its feet. And it's complete, and it's enough for the first down. It'll be close, but Jay Smith was right up around it. Now they say incomplete. They did not complete the catch through the ground, Sam. This was just one where as Jay Smith rolled over, the ball came out. Well, I'd like to take another look at this. Yeah, it's slant. Put your foot in the ground, drive it, has it. As he rolls over, ball is out. Looks like Brewer pulled it out. Well, I don't know about that. But there's not enough video evidence to overturn what was on the field, which was incomplete. They did first call in first, uh, incomplete and incomplete. And now they will take a look at it. I'm not sure that they didn't burn a timeout. Tom O'Brien might have burned a timeout for them to get a chance to look at this. Before the timeout, prior to the coach's timeout, the previous play is under review. So they got buzzed just before Tom O'Brien was going to burn a timeout to have them look at this a little longer. Jay Smith on the slant, outstanding throw away from the defender, knee on the there. ground. Well, I don't know, partner. This is where he's got to hang on to the football, though, right through here. Tim, he's got to hang on to the ball. Well, the official call is incomplete, so you tell me if you've got enough evidence to overturn it. I don't think you do. And then it comes out. Well, Kevin Steele and his defense got what they wanted. They got the throw underneath. Good job by Jay Smith to catch it and then try to make the tackle before the first down. Had he held on to that, I think NC State probably converts there. No, I don't think there's any question. You're right. But there's not enough video evidence to overturn the incomplete call. 
Guarantee you the NC State coaches will scrutinize that play when they get back to Raleigh. Well, this is a huge early call for Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers. Uh, See Tom O'Brien there on the left, the head coach of the Wolf Pack, earned a reputation at Boston College for winning eight and nine games and going to a bowl game every year. That's where he's trying to get at NC State. After three years and one one bowl, fans got a little anxious, but he's got them going this year for sure. Boy, and the injury situation for NC State is far better this year than it's been in recent years for Tom O'Brien. Fans, get your cell phones ready. It's time for the AT&T fan vote. We want you to answer to this question. Which one of these players will have the biggest impact today? Just text your answer to A1 or A2 to 55333 or go to ACC.com and vote. And you'll get the results right here in the second half. further review, the ruling on the field stands in complete pass. And I think that uh, is a bright product of what you were saying, partner. I don't think they had enough to flip it over after the call was incomplete on the field. So we'll see Andy Leffler, the punter, and he'll be punting to right there's Andy Leffler. And he'll be punting to DeAndre Hopkins. We had an outstanding day uh, against Florida State. Average almost 48 yards on four kicks against Florida State the last Thursday night. Good rush. Leffler high spiraling kick. And Hopkins will fair catch it and then get out of the way. Champion presents How You Play. The legend of Howard's Rock began in the early 60s here at Clemson. When Clemson alumnus S.C. Jones brought a rock back from Death Valley and it laid around Coach Howard's office for years before it was mounted on a pedestal at the top of the hill. The players started rubbing that rock before running down the hill. That was way back in 1967, and that's our champion feature celebrating the history and traditions of the ACC. Champion, it's how you play the game. And they've rubbed that rock almost raw ever since. <laughs> I love that story, though. He says, will you somebody get this rock out of my office? They found a place for it. We used to come up the midfield and watch him come down that hill. Coach Claiborne said, you're going to watch him anyway. Come on up here and watch it. <laughs> Harper, no gain. Give him two yards, actually, and it'll be second down and eight. Clemson's done an outstanding job of move, uh, moving the football, Tim. They just have, have been their own worst enemy. Put the ball on the ground a couple of times that have thwarted drives. See if they can put another, together another drive. Parker got off to a great start. But then he put the ball on the ground. We saw one play from Todd's board. Here's Parker. He tucks it away and gets out to the 15 yard line. Knocked out of bounds or at least chased out of bounds by Brian Slay and Audie Cole. Well, now here's where things begin to get a little exotic now if you start trying to take on Mike Archer's defense. Because this is where they'll get exotic with some of the blitzes. Three down linemen, linebackers coming from different directions, and they'll play zone behind it. That front four has done well this year, despite losing four starters from last year, including Willie Young and Alan Michael Cash. Third down and eight. Plenty of time for Parker. Has it complete to Hopkins. Hopkins out across the 45 to the 47. A gain of 33. Oh, what great protection by Clemson here. They bluff the blitz, just a four-man rush, little twist up front by the two tackles. Good job of Kyle Parker standing in strong, and he get, get Hopkins on the deep in route. Well, just a good job up front. And that'll bring the first quarter to an end. Oh, I think this game's going to heat up. Both teams moving the ball offensively. Both teams active defensively. It's 7-0 State. And we're about to start the second 15 from Death Valley. Closed captioning for ACC football is brought to you by Bojangles Famous Chicken and Biscuits. It's bow time. Downtown Clemson was some kind of active yesterday. 
It was jammed getting ready for this ACC football Saturday. Not a whole lot of action down there right now. Everybody here at Memorial Stadium. I think the entire Pickens County is here today. Parker steps up, now goes to a safety foul. Throws out in the flat. First down, Parker. He's got more and knocked out of bounds at the 31. A pickup of 22 yards. Hopkins is going to get deep right here. They get a hard play action fake, and no one's home in the flat. Good job of Parker sliding up in the pocket and finding Harper in the right flat. Cold weather even froze your telestrator. First down and 10 at the 31. Straight ahead, McDowell. Roderick McDowell is a redshirt freshman. Finally stopped by Nate Irving. Let's take a look at Nate Irving. Outstanding middle linebacker. See him throw the block off right here, get off the block of Freeman. And then get in on the tackle. Nate Irving, the leading tackler on his football team. And a terrific story. Had that scary car crash, slowed down his development. He's now a big time player. He's played a frenetic, contagious style of football, and it's been contagious. First team all ACC and the captain of this defense, Nate Irving. That's a free play. McDowell again around the left side. There is a flag. Offside defense number 42. The penalty is five yards. Repeat second down. Unusual. NC State is one of the most least penalized teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Take a look at the first quarter statistics. Clemson had two critical third down penalties, one on defense, one on offense. And that certainly has hurt their chances of scoring, but look at the time of possession, partner. Yeah. Right there. Outstanding job of controlling the football. Now they've got to cash it in. It's one thing to possess the football, but now you got the points. Well, it was those two penalties that kept him off the board earlier, and then a bad snap on the field goal attempt. Here's McDowell again. He tiptoes around the right side. Injuries have set him back. He had a bad ankle the first half of the season, but he's back and running well. He's the guy that we'll see for Clemson in the backfield that has home run capabilities. Take a look at the Geico scoreboard. Maryland up early on Miami, 13 to 6. Duke up on Virginia, 21 to 7. Oh, I love these stretch runs in the Atlantic Coast Conference. November is some kind of fun. Parker rolls right, throws back, dangerous pass. That's what got him into trouble last week at Boston College. Well, I couldn't see who he was throwing this to, whether he was trying to get it to Dwayne Allen, who was dragging from the backside. There's Dwayne Allen in the corner. I'm sorry, uh, Nuke. Yeah, Nuke uh, Hopkins. Nuke Hopkins trying to struggle across. But back. that partner, that play was almost identical to what happened at Boston College last week. He rolled right through back across his body, threw a dead duck, and it was intercepted. Fourth down and one, and Clemson's going for it. Oh, it's going to be close. Harper looks like he got the first. He's up by the sticks. See where it's marked. And that's going to be a first down, I believe. They're going to bring the chains out. Had to get to the 21 yard line. When you're kind of forced into this call, Tim, because of what's gone on, the woes of the kicking game. Boy, as a quarterback, though, you had to love that when they said go for it. Well, certainly, I mean, this was a situation where if you're going to turn and hand the football, you become more of a spectator than anything else. So you hand off and hope. Good job by Jimmy Harper to get the first down. But I think this whole scenario forced Dabo Sweeney's hand forced because of what they have been not able to do in the kicking game. You can't, just can't kick the field goal. Dabo Sweeney rolled the dice and one gets the first down first down and 10 ball on the 21. Harper. 
trips over his blocker. Now the whistle blew. The ball was on the ground, but the whistle blew. It was a dead play. J.R. Sweezy was the one that broke that thing up. It's an outstanding job up front. Sweezy gets some penetration. Reese Camp is there. Harper's got no chance to blow up the block at the point of attack, and Harper couldn't get his feet going. So that'll bring up second and 12, so they're going in the wrong direction. Very quiet in here for 82,000 fans. A little bit frustrated right now by Clemson. Again, Parker rolls way right, throws back across his body, and it's picked off. Look out. This is Terrell Manning. Terrell Manning. Still on his feet at the 20. Inside the 15. Terrell Manning touchdown. NC State 80 yard return. And again, there is a flag. Well, you mentioned it, Tim. Kyle's scrambling ability is outstanding, but then his decision making to throw the ball back to the middle of the field is costly. After the interception, during the return, Blocking the back, 90 of the offensive team. North Carolina State ball, first down. Well, Parker's pushed out of the pocket early. Right through the middle comes the pressure. Outstanding. Muggio does a good job of getting pressure. And then Parker, outstanding, the outstanding job of getting out of the pocket. Now can't throw the ball back to the middle of the field. Just can't make that throw. Now Manning. Does an outstanding job. He gets an illegal block on this, but I want you to watch Adi Cole, number 42, come into the back end of this thing. Here's Cole. Right here, gets the block right there that actually would have put Manning in the end zone. But it all comes back because of the illegal block earlier. How about the run by Manning? 6'3, 224 pounder, and it looked like a running back. I think Dabo Sweeney is to the point now where he's got to find someone that's going to take care of the football. And Kyle gives him a great opportunity to make plays, but he's also forcing it into coverage a little bit. We may see Taj Boyd. This is Wilson. Wilson throws down the middle, incomplete, and TJ Graham was wide open. Let's go downstairs, Mike Hogwood. Mike. Well, there haven't been many injuries for NC State, but one to take note of is starting running back Dean Haynes. He had a mild concussion against Florida State. We understood he's been cleared to play, but so far he has not been in the game today. It's been pretty much Mustafa Green getting relief a little bit from James Washington. Mustafa Green is a true freshman, was the ACC Player of the Week in that game against Cincinnati. Tom O'Brien and Dana Bible think the world of Mustafa Green and his potential. And there he is. When you get opportunities in games to make plays, they're probably six or seven plays you look back on you say wow it was a chance to make a play you either did or you didn't NC State had an opportunity on first down here for a touchdown and Russell Wilson under three Graham and now they're in third and long backed up in their own of the field so Green goes out they need seven Wilson throws Washington has the first down Picks up 13. They only needed seven. Now here's here's Washington right here. Now here's where the problem is trying to decipher who's supposed to be in the flat for Clemson. They get mixed up on the coverage and don't find the flat receiver and an easy throw for Wilson. And another throw is complete this time to Owen Spencer. Owen Spencer is the field stretcher, averages 15 yards a catch. What Clemson does in the secondary is they play what essentially is called a match coverage, and they play in and out on receivers. And if you run a lot of receivers in different directions, you get messed up on who you're supposed to be with. Wilson has the first down and plenty of yardage in front of him. Stiff arm at the 40 and takes it down to the 37 yard line. Boy, he got his hand in Richard Hall's face and just stiff armed him. A gain of 28. Well, this is what we saw last week against Florida State was his ability to pull the ball down and take off. He ran for three touchdowns last week, and this is just a physical run at the end. Ooh. He gets the stiff arm at the end and gets out of bounds to conserve a little bit of the damage on the body. That really is in your face. Straight ahead, another big gainer on first down. 
Give him four and a half yards on that one. 9.55 to play in the second quarter. NC State continues to lead 7 0. And the strength of this Clemson defense is their defensive front. And so far, they have not been able to put the pressure on Daquan Bowers, a guy that many will consider one of the top defensive players in the country, has not been able to put the pressure on Russell Wilson. State had that 80 yard touchdown called back on this penalty. That pass is incomplete, so it's a second chance for the Clemson defense, and now a flag comes in late. This is a ball that Russell Wilson, I believe, was trying to throw over the top of coverage to Brian, but TJ Graham was trying to work back as well, and he made them grab. Last interference, number 21, the defense, 15 yard turn, out of first down. Now, freshman Darius Robinson is the call. He's the extra DB that comes in, and he was working against TJ Graham. Here's the matchup right down here, I believe, where you get the you get the, the call from. Graham's going to see his quarterback scrambling, so he turns to come back, and Robinson grabs Graham. And the throw was not intended for Robin or for Graham, but he Robinson gets the flag. Clemson sure is helping NC State here in the first half. And Green still on his feet carries the pile down inside the 15. Three penalties for 37 yards against the Tigers here in the first half and every single one of them has been important. Well, this is where Russell Wilson was so dangerous against Florida State when he took off with the football. Green again. Not much there. So it'll bring up third down. Andre Branch makes the tackle. There's a look at Clemson's red zone defense. Out of the 25 possessions, 14 touchdowns. It's pretty stingy. That, that is pretty stingy. That's well done. They've got to keep their eye on Wilson now to run. They need four on third down and a great stop there. So it'll bring up fourth down. Rashad Hall got his hand in there and knocked it away from Jay Smith. Safety Jonathan Meek slides in there and makes the play. Sophomore out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Blitz coverage that time, Tim. They made him throw it underneath, and then Meeks comes up and bats the ball away. So Josh Schakowsky comes on to attempt the field goal from 30 yards. Blocked. Brandon Thompson with the block. And Clemson makes the stop. Boy, just penetration right through the middle. Bowers and Thompson were there along with Branch. Well, that's a huge stop for Clemson. Jenkins made the block. Bowers was there as well. They stopped him. Bow time showed up early in Clemson this morning, and there's no place or no time to enjoy Bojangles tailgate like in the morning here at Death Valley. Special eight pieces of seasoned chicken, four made from scratch biscuits, two large fixings, and half a gallon of the legendary iced tea. Woo! Bow time, and there's another fumble, and it's fumble time, and Clemson has it back. Well, Tim, this is just a stretch play. You're a quarterback. You've been standing on the sidelines. And Taj Boyd, you've got to get out there wide, get that ball out there. You're responsible for the handoff. And just did not seat the football in the stomach of Jamie Harper. Let's, so go, they, down to, let's go down to Mike Hogwood. Well, all is not happy on the Clemson sideline, as you might imagine. When Kyle Parker was told he wasn't going in that series, you could tell a disgusted look on his face. He took his helmet off, put it down, put his baseball hat on, walked all the way up and down the bench trying to compose himself. And then Todd Boyd comes in and a fumble. Well, you get yanked for the first time in your career. That's 
That's hard to swallow. Well, Clemson gives it right back. And Green can't find any running room for Action That's Washington. Well, we go back to the play. You know, Taj Boyd. You know, you're a little cold. You try to stretch. You try to get in there and make a play, but that's one that on a handoff. The quarterback is responsible for all handoffs, and that one falls on Taj Boyd not getting the ball to Harper. But as a quarterback, when you get yanked out of a game, I think Kyle probably did all he could do was to not say anything, just go to the other end of the field and and try to compose. There is, there is no easy way to handle that. Wilson on second and goal goes to the corner. Almost caught by Jarvis Williams. Brewer on the coverage. Williams wants interference. Well, Xavier Brewer does a good job of being physical at the line of scrimmage. I thought he did a good job of hand fighting at the line of scrimmage. He was getting pushed off as well by Jarvis Williams. So I think Brewer did a really good job that time of standing his ground. Brewer did grab some cloth, but as a former defensive guy, that's all legal unless you get a flag. <laughs> Bottom line is it brings up third and goal from the six. Wilson with time intercepted and very wisely touched down by DeAndre McDaniel in the end zone. He almost ran that thing out. Touch back, bring it out to the 20, and the Tigers have the ball. Boy, what a stop by Clemson's defense. The offense turns it over inside the five. Get an outstanding stop. We talked about DeAndre McDaniel. He is a ball hawking safety. Watch him watch the quarterback's eyes, find the ball, and then a smart decision. Put your knee on the ground. We'll be back after this word from your local stations. Here in Clemson, South Carolina, NC State leads the Tigers seven to nothing. We've had three turnovers in the game. Although Clemson's put it on the ground four times, only lost it once. In the red zone, NC State touched down and had a field goal blocked, had an interception. And Clemson had the interception and a fumble. So it has been an interesting first half here at Death Valley. DeAndre McDaniel right there, number two, 15 career interceptions now. Just two away from Terry Kennard's all time record here at Clemson. That's his fourth on the year, and maybe none bigger for the Clemson Tigers than that one right there in his own end zone. So, Taj Boyd is your quarterback. 7 24 to play in the first half. And it's 7 0 pack. Left side, Harper bangs his way ahead. Take a look at the last four possessions, and this is what we were just talking about. It's been interesting. You had the touchdown, the field goal block, the fumble. They got that one back. The interception. And that's not even to mention the critical penalties that NC State had that took them out of or took a touchdown away. Two critical third down penalties, one on defense, one on offense, and so this game would be tied. Harper again bangs his way out across the 25 to the 26 and a half yard line. Yeah, through all that, no points came out of any of that. Two long drives with no points. What do you think, Mike? Uh, I'm going to tell you guys, there's some concern on the sideline. Uh, defensive coordinator Kevin Steele passed out a moment ago. He's on the bench now, and he's he's alert and okay, but the doctors are checking him out. And I think now he's got his headset back on, and that's certainly uh, good news. Boy, he had us worried for a moment, but the word now is Kevin Steele's going to be okay. Oh, my. This is McNeil, who has the first down. There is another flag down. Well, Dave, you mentioned the two long drives and no points. Clemson 15 plays, 65 yards. They missed the field goal. And NC State went nine plays, 70 yards, and missed the field goal or had it blocked. And the illegal block here against Clemson on the jailbreak screen. Blocking the back, 83 offense, 10 yard, previous spot, repeat third down. 5.45 to play in the first half. Boyd tries to get out of the pocket and is tripped up from behind by Michael Lemon. Boy, Clemson can't get out of their own way on offense. They get a first down on the little jailbreak screen. 
and get it called back for an illegal block. And now you're third and long. And you put your freshman quarterback in harm's way now. Good coverage down the field. Now Boyd pulls it down. And he makes the best decision of the game so far for him is to tuck the football, go ahead and eat it, and allow him to punt. Lost my concentration for a second thinking about Kevin Steele. Never good if somebody goes down like that. Clemson punts it away, a high tail wagger. Ball's loose again, and Clemson has it. TJ Graham put it on the ground. Clemson has it. There is a flag down at the 46 yard line. We're going to call uh, interference on the ability to catch his football. And this. Dabo Sweeney is going to go berserk if they call this interference. Well, they're calling it on Robinson, but it was a 36 yard punt. It was put on the ground. Now they'll call interference against Robinson, I believe. Good catching interference by the kicking team. 15 yard penalty. First down. He has room to catch this. Robinson. Well, Robinson picked it up, actually. I don't know about that. It was, was Maxwell who got in his way. It looked like he, he jumps out of it. He's got to have room to catch the football. Oh, I don't know about that one, partner. Well, they do a good job. The officials do an outstanding job here in the ACC. That one, that one's sketchy there. First down and 10. NC State. Russell Wilson. Taken down immediately. And that's Bowers' 12th sack of the year. He's back on top, and he is the nation's sack leader again. Now he turns it up here now, gonna come off the edge. Look at the power move, just blows right through Philip Price. And that gives him 12 sacks. He's on your right hand side. He's gonna blow through Price. Just a power move, bull rush that time. Put the quarterback on the ground. Bowers has that great blend of size, speed, acceleration, and a granite frame. Yeah, just a half a sack away now from the defensive line sack record here held by Gaines Adams. This is Green. Hawkins made the tackle. Still not back to the original line of scrimmage as you look at Kevin Steele is back up and working. Yeah, that's good to see he's okay. Looks like he's okay. You talk about a guy that burns the midnight oil now and loves the game, passionate for the game. He's got all the charts on the wall of every possible formation that NC State will run, what he's going to do against it, the adjustments. He's been to the NFL, coached at Nebraska, Alabama, and the coordinator here at Clemson. Trying to draw up something here on third down and 11. Wilson chased out of the pocket, and they're there to take him down the well. Andre Branch takes him down. This is an outstanding job, Tim, of crushing the pocket from the outside back down to the rushers in the middle. Bowers gets a push from the middle. Branch up to the outside. Branch spins back and makes the play. But a good job of not providing any escape hatch for Russell Wilson. Here's a look at Marcus Gilchrist. I don't think he'll get a chance at this one. They tried to pooch it, and it goes out of bounds on the 18. Not quite the kick they wanted, but they certainly didn't want to kick it to Marcus Gilchrist. 2.53 to play in the half. One of the landmarks down here, the SO Club. It is a tradition. Before and after games, they're loving this. So Clemson makes a stop defensively. Now they get the ball offensively with 253 to play. Kyle Parker back in the ball game. 253 to play in the first half. And the Tigers trailing by seven. This is Parker. And never really gave Harper a chance. You know, we were talking about Clemson defensive coordinator, Kevin Steele going down. And there he is, took his hat off. He was jumping around. Got very excited. Now he stops and he's getting a little bit woozy. And it was right after this he went down. See him get a little swagger there and kind of started to zigzag and went down. I think he just got a little too excited. 
told you he burns a lot of midnight oil probably a little dehydrated. You see him hydrating him on the sideline. Probably hadn't eaten. Couple of stutter steps and Hopkins makes his way up. To the first down sticks Cole finally makes the tackle. That's a good call by Billy Napier they catch. NC State in a blitz. Little screen to the outside get the lineman out in front good block out there by Harrison. Probably should have had a little face mask tagged on. Anton McLean with a good block out there. Harper again with time steps up throws over the middle intended for McNeil and thrown behind him. And yeah, Tim these are those situations where as a receiver and again these are young receivers to understand the idle down in a hole now this is a window watch this window. He had zone coverage now settle in that window right there. That's where Parker's throwing the football but these young receivers don't understand that yet they'll get it. But they're talented receivers but understand to gear down in that hole so Parker can put the ball on. Second down and ten. Jones has a blocker. Out near the first down marker he'll be about two yards short. Audie Cole made the stop. Third down and one. Parker. He could run for this one. And gets it to Harper and they have the first down. Augustin chased him out. Parker probably could have gotten the first on his own. But he threw the little shuffle pass. And got the first down with Harper. Straight ahead across the 40. Under the 140 we go. Well, interesting call there Tim. Get up under center and run the football there with just a minute and a half left. Good job by Nate Irving to smell out the run. Parker again had plenty of room to run and throws and has it complete to Hopkins for another first down. Well, a nice pickup by Jamie Harper. Body Cole coming off the edge. Harper slides out, picks him up, provides Parker the opportunity to slide to his right and find Hopkins on the sideline. You know, you'll appreciate the way Harper throws on the run. It's only when he tries to throw across his body does he get in trouble. Yeah, you know, he makes that mistake. He gets out near the numbers and tries to throw it back in towards the hash mark, and that'll get you a seat on the bench. Well, when he runs and rolls out, throws off that back foot, he's accurate. Like that. Hopkins. Another first down, 110 to go. All of a sudden, Kyle Parker's become a curator of the clock. Well, you got to remember now, we're talking about this kid being in the middle of his second year of playing quarterback at this level. We marvel at what he was able to do last year 20 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, but this is a guy that's still learning how to play the quarterback position. And so he's going to make some mistakes. Kind of treat him like a senior. He's just a sophomore quarterback. Seventy seconds left. He's got room. Get out of bounds, and Parker does. With 102 to play in the first half. Very nicely done by Kyle Parker and chased out by Audie Cole. <laughs> this is the old fake it and duck. <laughs> he slipped right underneath. And then Kyle does an, an outstanding thing here. He won't get credit for this. He knows he's only got one timeout left. Does a great job of getting to the sideline. Now he had to give a little ground up to get there, but he puts himself in a second and five, but he also has the timeout in his pocket. Three timeouts left for Clemson. 102 to play here in the first half. Allen in motion. Parker goes to Allen. Allen out a gain of nine. Clock will continue to move under a minute to play. Don't have to rush. Timeout on the field. David Smith comes into the ball game and with 54 seconds left, timeout will take one as well. Dabo Swinney trying to get his team on the board. Clemson moving the football with 54 seconds left to play in the first half and trailing NC State 7 0. Russell Wilson has thrown a touchdown pass in 29 of his 31 career games, and he threw a three yard touchdown pass early in the game to give NC State the lead. 
It's been an outstanding job by Kyle Parker to rally after he sat down. Taj Boyd came in at quarterback. Parker inserted back in the lineup. Did an outstanding job of moving his team. Made good decisions in this drive. Both of these quarterbacks today have signed contracts with the Colorado Rockies. They're going to play baseball, but this is Parker now trying to work a straight up touchdown for Clemson. Oh, what a run here by Harper. Bangs his way down inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. C.J. Wilson. Well, C.J. Wilson tried to come down low and try to get down on the legs of the big back. And he but got Harper, hammered. Harper dropped that shoulder on him. That's what you call. That's the old day. Back in the old days, Tim used to drop the flipper on him. Good call, partner. So another first down. They move the chains. They send the big fella up the middle again. Harper, six foot, 235 pounds. Taken by Nate Irving. Dave, we talked about these guys perhaps being teammates with the Colorado Rockies. They look, they'll be diamond teammates, Wilson and Parker. First round pick, Kyle Parker. Fourth round pick, Russell Wilson. Wilson can hit. He'll probably play second base. Pitched here for NC State, and Kyle Parker can do it all. Yeah, I Kyle, mean, Kyle led his team to the College World Series last year and finished the National Four, fourth in the nation. How about this Arch 20 touchdowns and 20 home runs in the same academic year. He's the only guy to do that. Parker with plenty of time looks into the end zone wide open McNeil touchdown Clemson. A 13 yard strike by Parker and another flag. Now this isn't a bad place for Clemson to that holding area. Holding 72 in the offense. And that draws a sarcastic smile from Dabo Swinney. Yeah, Landon Walker gets flagged at big right tackle for Clemson. This is one as a play it took a long time to develop. McNeil got down through the middle after adjusting his route, and Parker found him. But so often when you get it that much time to throw it, somebody's grabbed hold of a jersey. Landon Walker, 6'6, 310 pounder from North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Been looking forward to this game against NC State. He's the vocal leader and he's the guy who was called for the penalty. That's six penalties against Clemson, 62 yards, and it's killed him in the first half. Parker again has to step up in the pocket. He's got problems and he goes down. And see, that's one where Kyle's got to understand it's just second down. I still have a timeout in my pocket. Find the back. Jamie Harper, number eight, throw it to the back right there in front of you. He's trying to make a little too much happen. And this is what Dabo Sweeney said last week. Is that he felt like Kyle was trying to make too much happen. Just get the ball to somebody and let them make some plays. J.R. Sweezy makes the tackle. So Tim, let's look at this play that got called back. Remember, McNeil catches the touchdown through the middle. Walker working on that right side. Landon Walker right there, grabbing in the middle of the frame. And that's a pretty easy call for the official. As he tackled Reese Camp, who was rushing on that right side. Had two touchdowns called back. Of course, the Manning interception return for a touchdown was called back because of an illegal block. And there, a touchdown pass from Parker to McNeil called back because of the holding. This is one of the most talented offensive lines in the ACC. Allowed just six sacks coming into this game. Parker again has company in the backfield. He's going to go down again. Reese Camp got there first. And that just took him out of scoring range. Well, once again, Reese Camp working on that right side against Landon Walker. The left of your screen here. It's an outstanding job of rushing around the end. Parker was looking to throw the ball deep down the field, and they lose the opportunity for a field goal. And that's not the way Clemson wanted that half to end. And Dabo Swinney is not happy. He's letting Jack Childress know about it. Let's go downstairs. Here's Mike Hogwood. Thank you, Tim. Uh, well, Coach, boy, your defense gave you a great half right there, shutting out the Tigers. Yeah, they have. We got to find a way to get the ball in the end zone. We had two opportunities. We let go with a missed field goal and the interception. So 
We just got to keep playing hard. What do you tell the guys in the locker room now? Well, we get the ball to start the third quarter. We got to make first downs and play the game. Parker throws into the end zone. Touchdown, Clemson. DeAndre Hopkins. Well, the story in this first half has been obviously defense. NC State scored on its first possession, but then mistakes, as you heard Tom O'Brien tell us, kept them out of the end zone. On the other hand, Clemson has been down into state territory several times, but they missed a field goal, and then they've had a couple of uh, really bad things happen to them, including on that last drive when it looked like they were going to go in and score. They actually threw a touchdown pass to Kyle Parker, but it was called back because of holding. He he did a great job, I thought, of moving the team down the field after getting pulled. He came back in the game, a smart play here to get out of bounds, to stop the clock, trying to save the timeout. There's the touchdown, but you saw the yellow flag flying in and then give the state defense a lot of credit. Wow, 14 plays, 38 yards on that drive, and Dabo Sweeney has not been happy with the officials the entire first half. It started with a pass interference call uh, that really hurt him, and you've got to say that penalties came at really inopportune times for the Clemson Tigers and really did hurt their offense in a big way into that first half. The first half, not really well played, not cleanly played. A lot of mistakes made by both ball clubs. NC State at halftime here, they're saying they feel like they should be up by three touchdowns and Clemson really a little bit frustrated and concerned about what they had the first half as well. Well I think they should be it's certainly an opportunities are lost on both sides. Both teams had opportunities to put points on the board and really put this game out of reach. Neither have been able to do that so now we're locked into a, a tussle to the end at just seven nothing at halftime. Take a look at the first half highlights and of course the Wolfpack got out of the gates in a hurry. They came out and had the first touchdown pass three yards to Mustafa Green. Well, an excellent first drive by Russell Wilson and that was pretty much it. Russell Wilson held in check just 90 yards passing in the first half. He averages 290. But this is really about a half about mistakes. Missed opportunity here. An opportunity for, for Kyle Parker to get inside the 10. Fumbles the football. They get it back. But they missed the field goal opportunity. Their one chance to put points on the board. Well, it was a mistake-filled first half. Here, Parker tried to throw across his body. It was picked off by Manning. He took it back 80 yards, thought he had a touchdown, flag on the play. Yeah, and then this one's called back. So NC State makes a play and shoots themselves in the foot, and then an excellent stop defensively by Clemson after a turnover. They get the block field goal, and then they turn the football right back over and have to come in and get another stop. And as it turned out, it was the defense that rolls up again, DeAndre McDaniel, with his 15th career interception. Well, Clemson had a chance in the last drive. Kyle Parker, time and time again, had open spaces, tried to utilize his running ability, got out of bounds, stopped the clock, moved him right down, but then again they made mistakes. Yeah, a holding penalty calls back the touchdown throw from Kyle Parker to Bryce McNeil. They reload it and back-to-back -back sacks in the half for Clemson as they look up the scoreboard with a big goose egg in their column. So as we look at the GMC halftime statistics, you look at these numbers, and behind the numbers are the six penalties, four fumbles by Clemson. They lost one of them and threw the interception as well. Well, one thing you can't say for Clemson is they're playing outstanding defensively. They've held a great passing attack to just 90 yards in the first half. Just about set for the second half here at Death Valley. 7-0 NC State over Clemson coming your way right after this. Great day, chilly afternoon. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood. Tim, I, I just talked to uh, Clemson coach Dabo Sweeney. I asked him what he told his guys in the locker room. He took a big breath and then said, I can't tell you. But what I can tell you is our team is playing with heart. He said they're playing with passion. And sooner or later, good things have got to start happening. And he hopes it's this half. Well, he continues to get after the officials, Mike. He's not happy as you look at the quarterback comparison. How about Russell Wilson? He's accounted for 29 touchdown passes now in the last 31 games of his career. That's a kid that has 12 games of three plus touchdown passes in his career, but he has been held in check today by a defense that got after him in the second quarter. Kyle Parker rallied in that last drive before being stopped with two sacks, back to back sacks. There they are. You're looking at the two quarterbacks. And you're looking at James Washington, the return man. Spencer Benton has a short kick taken on the run at the 15. 
And Washington bangs his way across the 30 to the 31 yard line stopped there by Goodman. And let me put a footnote to this as NC State starts the second half with good field position. The Wolfpack has scored the second half opening drive in five of eight games. Look at their first half possessions. They certainly had opportunities. Had the field goal block and had a touchdown re return. They're called back. Interception return called back. Just six plays over the final eight minutes or so of the second quarter, and they have not seen the football much. First down and ten. NC State at the 31. Quick pass out. Not much there. Spencer hit immediately. Sense of ball was there in a hurry. He read it and he closed on it. Well, a good quick read on the quick screen to the outside by Sensabaugh. Now you're second and 11. Memorial Stadium usually rocks, but I think this crowd right now is a little disheartened. Straight ahead, Green. And again, a good stop by that Clemson defense. Jenkins, Thompson, Bowers, all there. Didn't you get a feel, Tim? About eight minutes to go, second quarter, ten minutes to go, second quarter. This defensive front of Clemson decided they were going to try to take the game over. And I thought they did an outstanding job of controlling the tempo of the game from that point on. Now it's up to NC State to try to rejuvenate and get themselves kick started. How about that? Five plays, eight yards, but they've got it here. This is Brian, your tight end. First down and more into Clemson territory. Big gain, 20 yards, stopped by Hawkins. Now, once again, a mix up in coverage. Too far for Hawkins to have to go to try to cover the tight end in the flat. And I think he looked, he was hoping maybe the corner would come off and help him. You get complicated in that secondary. You call a lot of different calls. You gotta be able to sort out the receivers coming inside, one going outside. They've missed up on that a couple times today. Wilson chased out of the pocket and tripped up and throws it away. Crowd wanted a flag. Moore had the pressure, tripped him up from behind. Again, what a this smart play, huh? Yeah, again, this defensive front for Clemson trying to step up. Randy Moore, number 94, is going to skate to the inside and try to get around the feet of, of Russell Wilson. And then a good decision by Wilson to throw the ball away out of bounds, try to minimize the damage. But, I think uh, his, they his didn't, knee hit before he threw the ball him, anyway. They didn't give him credit for it. it. Looked like he, could, yeah, called down. So to bring up second down and 18 from the 45. And he gives straight ahead to Green. His Clemson defense right now is swarming, and they're led by Daquan Bowers. Yeah, tough sledding up front right now for that offensive front to try to to try to battle. Let's look out on the edge. A little stock blocking on the outside, and then things get a little heated. <laughs> it is. It is the textile bowl. And they're weaving a little animosity toward each other. Nice. Wilson again in trouble. Dodges one. He's got some space. And Wilson carries it all the way down to the 41. Not enough for the first down. Stopped by Hall and McDaniel there. But you advance it enough, Tim, where you consider maybe going here. They thought about it. Now they'll send their punt team on the field, but they certainly looked at it. Andy Leffler hasn't had many opportunities today. He comes into the year with his bang nine outside inside the 20 yard line, so he's, he's handled this part of it pretty well. Marcus Gilchrist is standing on his own 10. Leffler pressure. End over end again tries to pooch it into the corner. This ball will roll inside the five to the one and be down on the one. No touchback. Boy, that's Are a, you kidding me? That's sloppy there, Tim. They had a chance to down that and did not handle it very well at all. A 41 yard punt 
and the special teams had it on a platter and couldn't keep it out of the end zone. Time to tailgate. 11:26 to play, third period, seven nothing ball game. Have a bite and come on back inside. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium, everybody. Clemson now with the football for the first time in the second half. Keep in mind, Clemson as a team has not scored in the last five quarters. Last time they scored was at Boston College. It was early, and that was the defense that scored on a pick six. Here's Kyle Parker, and he's going to go down. Ball's loose. And NC State gets it back. Reese Camp recovers the football. It's the fifth time today that Clemson has put the ball on the ground, and it's the second fumble that they've lost. Tim, this is an offensive line that comes in eight, number one in the ACC in sacks given up. It looked like Kyle Parker tried to throw this football. And it'll be interesting to see if they take a look at this, because I think he tries to throw it. Now, does it come out sideways in a lateral situation? Oh, he got stripped out. Looks like Terrell Manning may have batted the ball out of his hands before he was able to turn it loose. What a game Manning's had, huh? Had the interception return at 80 yards. It was called back the touchdown for a flag, but now he gets that, knocks that ball loose, and Clemson will have to go back on defense. Washington, McDowell, correction, tripping. And it was Washington, the ball carrier, that goes down immediately. Washington got started and then just kind of stumbled. So Virginia has taken the lead and Miami's come back on Maryland to close it within two 17 15 Terrapins Maryland trying to stay in the hunt in the Atlantic Division. High snap Wilson throws it out in the flats. Absolutely nothing for T.J. Graham. Marcus Gilchrist closed in a hurry. Yeah, if you're going to throw these screens to the outside, the slot receiver, and in this place, in this case, Jarvis Williams, number five, has to get the block. Gilchrist plays off the block, and then he's helped on the play by Brewer. But an excellent job of Gilchrist playing off the block of Williams and putting the receiver on the ground. Keep in mind, Clemson won the Atlantic Division title last year with one of the top defenses in the ACC. Of course, they had C.J. Spiller on offense. Now the defense is playing well again and trying to take NC State out of the hunt for that Atlantic Division. Maryland still alive as well, playing Miami. Here's Wilson underneath. Has it complete to Washington, and it's down to the 10-yard line. Not nearly enough for the first. Andre Branch makes the tackle. Force the throw underneath. So that'll bring the field goal crew on. Number two in the ACC in scoring defense is Clemson, allowing only 18 points a game. Josh Chikowski for a 28 yard field goal attempt. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up long enough, and it's good. So NC State extends its lead to 10 nothing here in the shadow of Lake Hardwell. You are watching the ACC Network an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. And the Atlantic Coast Conference proud to bring you this game this afternoon as we come down the stretch in November 10 nothing NC State. 9 10 to play in the third period. This is Marcus Gilchrist looks for a crease and takes it out to the 33 yard line. Well we're in the stretch run now and while Virginia Tech certainly is controlling the coastal division the Atlantic division is wide open. NC State seems to be in the driver's seat right now. Maryland still trying to make a run. Florida State very much in the hunt. But NC State with that big win just over a week ago against the Seminoles. And so they're trying to get a win here today at Death Valley, which would set them up pretty nicely. Uh, Clemson, Clemson trying to find a way to put some points on the board as we look at the Atlantic Division. 
And there you see it, Clemson control, or uh, I'm sorry, NC State controls their own destiny. They get Maryland at the end of the season. Maryland doing battle with Miami today and leading last we saw. Well, Florida State still has Clemson, Maryland, and Florida. So they've got two ACC games after this. Maryland's got Virginia, Florida State, and NC State. So a tough road for the Terrapins. And NC State goes on the road, as you mentioned. They play Wake Forest next week, but then they have to go to Chapel Hill and then to College Park to play the Terrapins. Bring up third and six. Uh, this is a Clemson team that's kind of searching for somebody to make a play. Andre Ellington not playing today. He's been responsible for 12 touchdowns on the year. We talked about Spiller, Ford, and Palmer all moving on to the National Football League. 34 touchdowns moved on and went to the National Football League. They're trying to find somebody to make a play. Kyle Parker looks for a playmaker and throws underneath the spin by Jones, but it'll be short of the first. Stopped by Audie Cole. Clemson's last offensive touchdown came seven quarters ago. It took place in the third quarter against Georgia Tech. Hard to fathom. Yeah, they're lad. They, they scored a defensive touchdown last week against Boston College, but were shut out on the offensive side of the football from a touchdown standpoint. And it, it, they just look like they're trying to find someone to make a play. We mentioned Ellington not playing today, leading rusher. Top touchdown maker for them, and they have a tough time sledding today. Dwayne Allen has been very quiet, their leading receiver at tight end. Dawson Zimmerman's punt will take TJ Graham back to the 10. That's where he fair catches it, and that's where the ball will be spotted. So Zimmerman with a 48 yard punt, and NC State will be backed up. NC State has the ball and a 10 0 lead here in the third quarter. Our Polaris hardest working player of the week. Taylor Gentry number 45 or 47 rather special team superstar former walk on at NC State you see his career numbers and he is your Polaris hardest working player of the week. This time they may lose a yard green had absolutely nowhere to go and it has been a tough day for the Clemson Tigers. Well, it really has. They just have not taken care of the football. Five fumbles on the day. Now they've been fortunate. They've gotten three of them back. Only lost two of them. But they've thrown an interception. This was returned for touchdown but called back. But just a number of sloppy plays. And boy have they been bailed out by their defense. To only be down 10 nothing after how they've taken care of the ball offensively is a miracle if you're a Clemson Tiger fan. Not what Dabo Swinney expected here today, not to mention the six penalties. Russell Wilson with space takes it up the middle. Short of the first down, but a good gain. Finally stopped by Bowers. Well, it's something that they they were very concerned about. To try to keep Russell Wilson hemmed in. They do a good job of making him escape forward. And now when you escape, you've got to make sure you're tattooing. He did a good job of getting as much as he could and got on the ground. Excellent job by Russell Wilson to put this in a third and short situation. A situation they haven't seen much of over the last 15 minutes of the game. James Washington the lone setback in the backfield with Wilson. They need one on third straight ahead they go and they get the first move the chains. James Washington who came into the game as their third down back coming off knee surgery but he's getting a workout here today. Tom O'Brien using the young sophomore in critical situations. Well, outstanding football coach right there now. Discipline. Does an outstanding job with this program. This is the first year he's had a team that hasn't been beat up. They were beat up his first couple of years. Wilson being chased out of the pocket just throws it away. You know you make a great point. Tom O'Brien came into NC State and I mean devastated with injuries his first three years. He also wanted to get his type of player in there. He, there were some character issues. And some guys really didn't know how to win at NC State. You look at this. These numbers are unbelievable. Yeah, you talk about you didn't have Nate Irving all of last year because of the car accident. But just uh, Three loss, three starts lost to injury this year. Boy, it helps to keep your players on the field, and he knows that. You lose 60 players or 60 starts 
per season. Wow. But he said the biggest issue is getting guys that can win. Balls on the ground again. It's loose. And Clemson says they have it. And they do. Hawkins recovered the fumble, and that'll bring him to their feet at the Memorial it's, Stadium. It's been a long time since I've seen a, a game this sloppy from a ball handling standpoint. This is one where Wilson is running the zone read. Mustafa Green is the, the freshman running back and just didn't secure the football. Looked like Wilson did a pretty good job of, of putting it into the mesh point, but he just didn't take care of the ball. But another play by the Clemson defense, and this time they provide their offense with great field position. Seven quarters and counting for this Clemson offense to go scoreless. Kyle Parker has it served up on a platter here. Ball sits on the 22 yard line. First down, Tigers. The motion man is Ash. And they're going to throw to Ash in the corner. Correction is Hopkins, and it's knocked away. Halfback option pass, and Ash was open for a second. Then he went, and he went deep to Hopkins, but it was broken up by Bishop. Well, the play takes this a hair too long. He's forced wide right there, loads it up and throws it. But an excellent job of Bishop smelling it out and getting over there. Boy, he got there just in time to jar it out of there. Boy, that right. recovery by Bishop. That's a slobber knocker right there. He'll go out with his head on a swivel now. Here's Parker again with a little swing pass to McNeil. McNeil inside the 15 to the 10. Terrific block by Brandon Ford. Watch for number 80, Brandon Ford is going to get the block at the top of your screen, right up at the top. And now McNeil gets in behind. Just a quick screen to the slot receiver. And this is where they've been made most of their yardage. Most of their hay has come from these little quick screens. Pickup of 12. First and goal from the 10. McDowell stopped immediately. Robert McDowell had an ankle injury in the first half of the season. The injuries have really set him back. Getting playing time today, but he was stopped immediately on that one. But I think they're better off, Tim, down in this area to get Kyle Parker on the move. Get him, get him coming to the wide side of the field, give him a run pass option. Look at these numbers, partner. Wow. I look for him to move Parker here. Second down and goal from the nine. And again, they go straight ahead and they lose yardage with Harper. J.R. Sweezy takes him down. There's a lot of NC State defenders around the football. Excellent job. Sweezy knifes through and makes the play. He leads his defensive line in tackles coming into today. And he's been extremely active on the inside. They've had a tough time blocking Sweezy all day long. How much of it now becomes a mental thing? Not being able to score a touchdown. That's Almost a, eight quarters that's now. It's a, a great question. It can't be mental for this guy right here. He's got to squeeze the trigger and make a good decision. Third and goal from the 12. Parker throws into the end zone. Touchdown, Clemson. DeAndre Hopkins. Well, what an outstanding throw from Kyle Parker to Hopkins on the deep in route with everything on the line. Extending pre no pressure up front. Look at the old line. Swell up and give him time. And then he finds Hopkins right over the middle on the in route. Just an outstanding throw from the quarterback today. A 12 yard strike and the drought has ended. Extra point is good. And this game is tied with 2.44 to play in the third period. Tim, we've talked about the opportunities NC State's offense has been provided. They did not get, they did not cash them in. And here Clemson gets a golden opportunity and he, Kyle Parker, makes a play. Here's Hopkins right here. He's going to get up the field, push vertically, and then he's going to get in this hole. 
Now, the guy that Kyle Parker has to be worried about is that guy right there. But he squeezes it just inside the defender. Good job with his eyes to keep the, front, the defender frozen. Boy, what a nice comeback by Kyle Parker. He's had, a, he's had some moments today. He's had some moments that he's not going to want to think about, but that was one that you log away. What an excellent job by the, by the cash it in. 2.44 to play in the third. Well, maybe the biggest thing, Tim, you mentioned that this crowd seemed bewildered. Cashing in that fumble recovery into a touchdown has brought this huge throng back into the game. Spencer Benton that kicks off. And James Washington at the four. To the 19-yard line. It was made by Willard. The Toyota ACC team pages, exclusive team page content link into the Raycom blog network. You can visit the ACC.com. It's all there. Toyota ACC team pages. Crowd starting to come to life here at Memorial Stadium. It's now a 10-7 ball game, and the Tigers have finally scored. Into the flat complete to Williams. He stumbles his way out to the 18 yard line. They'll mark it at the 19. But Clemson's really had a tough time sorting that play out where they run the outside receiver inside on the slant and the slot receivers underneath him releasing to the flat. They haven't covered it yet. And I would imagine that Russell Wilson is going to continue to go to it till Kevin Steele's defense finds a way to get that covered. It's an easy five yard, four or five yards on the outside on first down. So now Russell Wilson goes back to work with a 10 7 lead. He's got pressure and he goes down. Jenkins and Bowers. Aquan Bowers, the nation's sack leader, who had one earlier. Well, and this is the one here now. It'll be interesting if they give Bowers the full sack or the half a sack. Jenkins is around the legs. Looks like Bowers will probably get that entire sack. And that will break the defensive line record here at Clemson, held by Gaines Adams, who had 12 and a half. That will be Bowers' 13th sack on the year. He also has 20 tackles for losses to go along with those sacks. Third down and 12. Wilson rolls, throws, first down. It's complete to Spencer. And he stepped out at the 49 yard line. Well, this is why Russell Wilson will be a leading candidate for ACC Offensive Player of the Year. His ability to extend the play, get to the outside, not commit to the run, survey and find a receiver, find Spencer on the sideline. This is an outstanding job. He and Tyrod Taylor do such a great job of extending plays and buying time for his receivers. Pick up of 31 yards again. Wilson rolls, moves, gets it to Washington. And Washington back inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. Wolfpack is on the move. And you, and you knew at some point that Russell Wilson was going to find a way to have an impact in the game. And it's been his mobility within and outside the pocket, stay in good throwing position, and find receivers. Here, Washington, the receiver. His running back leaking to the flat. That was a gain of 24 after a gain of 31 before it. First down and 10 at the 27, and that should be the last play of the quarter. No timeout. So Clemson takes a timeout. 36 seconds remain in the third quarter. And I think that's a byproduct there of Kevin Steele's defense being gassed, and so they decided to get the timeout. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood. Uh, coaches do different things to try to motivate their teams. Back in July, Tom O'Brien brought in Eric Kapotulik, a fellow Naval Academy grad and Marine, for team building exercise. He and three others from his company helped the Wolfpack in leadership and teamwork for two days, and it certainly paid off. Kapotulik talked to the team about persevering last Thursday before their game against Florida State, and that's just as you know what the Pack did in their upset of the Seminoles. And guess what? Kapotulik got the game ball for that game. Coach O'Brien says Eric tries to kill you to see if you'll survive. 
But I'll tell you what, Arch, uh, the, the team building for this certainly seems to have worked for what NC State's accomplished so far this year. Well, we saw in that video the guys in the pool treading water. There were some kids that were afraid to get in the pool. We were talking to Coach O'Brien, but they were encouraged by their teammates to get in. It was about treading water and encouraging each other and trying to outlast the pain. was uh, certainly proven out to be uh, an excellent teaching tool for his team. Tom O'Brien is not asking his players to do anything that he hasn't done. Naval Academy graduate, former Marine, now the head coach at NC State. Washington has nowhere to go. Again, the ball was on the ground. The waning seconds of the third quarter from Death Valley. Well, it's another situation where Clemson's defense, now this is a hole they dug for themselves, will have to rise up in the shadow of their own goalpost. But Russell Wilson has found something in his ability to move around and create an opportunity. So the third quarter comes to an end. NC State 10, Clemson 7. And we've got a ball game as we head to the final 15. Here we go. Clemson, NC State in the stretch run. As we start the final 15, the fourth quarter here at Memorial Stadium, it's 10 to 7, NC State. Time for our Progress Energy Progress Report as we look at the stats through the three quarters. Turnovers and penalties have been the story. Bottom line is we've got a ball game. Wilson throws, strike, first down inside the 15, Jay Smith. Well, what an outstanding throw from Wilson, DeAndre. McDaniel the outstanding safety for Clemson read the play and was closing but he couldn't get there in time because the ball was thrown so well from Wilson Boy, he put it on a string gain of 13 straight ahead Washington tries to tap dance across the 10 Hawkins makes the tackle there always fun to come down here to Death Valley this is one of the all time great football scenes in college sports. And for years we had characters down here like the great Frank Howard. And Bob Bradley the sports information director and SID emeritus for 45 years and this is the 10th anniversary of his passing. Great institution. Great to have Clemson in the ACC a storied program. Washington tripped up by Rennie Moore not a whole lot there. Well, you can't say enough about how well Clemson's defensive line has played in this game. They've, done, they've made a number of plays behind the line of scrimmage. Now will be their biggest test, though, because Russell Wilson, his ability to run the football, three touchdowns about 10 days ago against Florida State on a Thursday night. He will be a major player in this one right here. He takes off and runs with it. Bowers, Thompson, Jenkins, and Branch across that defensive front. Third down and seven. Underneath and broken up. Great play by Brewer, just knocked it away from Washington. Well, they got the defensive check at the line of scrimmage. As soon as NC State came out with no backs, Clemson checks to a six man rush where they can't pick it up. Branch gets the big hit and forces Russell Wilson to throw it quickly underneath. And a good job of batting it down by Brewer. So the field goal attempt here, and this is where Clemson has struggled. A 27 yard attempt. Good snap, good hold. Count zero, puts it through. NC State and Clemson taking it down to the wire. Closed captioning for ACC football is brought to you by Bojangles famous chicken and biscuits. It's bow time. This is a cemetery for those that have lost to the Tigers. Take you back to 1997 the great upset. Right now NC State leads 13 to 7 on Josh Chikowski's field goal. He has two today and had one blocked. This is Gilchrist. Gilchrist has to move. Look out. 
Kick this across midfield. He's got the sidelines. Down inside the 25 before he's finally knocked out of bounds. Grant finally took him out. But oh, what a return of 75 yards. Well, an explosive play by one of their big time leaders, senior corner Marcus Gilchrist finds a crease. Just an excellent job of getting north and south right away. And a game saving or a, a touchdown saving tackle at the end. I mentioned Andre Powell, the special teams coach here at Clemson. Four years he's been here, 10 returns for touchdowns. A lot of that obviously CJ Spiller. The 36 years prior to him arriving, 19 total. He's done an outstanding job with the special teams, Andre Powell. So a huge return by Gilchrist. And Clemson again with great field position. Parker left side inside the 20. Since that first touchdown pass of the game, Russell Wilson to Mustafa Green for three yards. Really not too much has happened where there hasn't been a turnover or a penalty. But the story of the game right now has to be that guy. Josh Joukowsky with two field goals. He has one blocked. But he has been some kind of special kicking the field goals and giving them the little advantage. But now Tigers trying to come back and get on the board and perhaps take the lead. Harper breaks the tackle. Gets down to the 15. Nate Irving finally takes him down. Well, what a great individual run by Harper. Really no blocking out on the edge for him. And he makes a number of NC State defenders miss. Finally, Nate Irving is able to help get him on the ground. Nate trying to get the strip there. Ellington and Harper played behind C.J. Spiller last year. Both guys ran for more than 400 yards behind Spiller. Now with Ellington hurt, Spiller gone, Harper stepping up. Parker pumps, tries to buy some time. Crowd wants him to tuck it and go. Instead, he throws it away, and that'll upset the faithful here because he had yardage. Well, and, and the opportunity to get this to a fourth and short if you don't pick it up was available. Now they're forced into a field goal situation. He wants to go to Harper on the left side. Good job by Terrell Manning to take that away. Now go ahead and gas it. He realizes the defender's coming, and he's going to take a shot, but that's one of those ones you got to lay it on the line and get as close as you can to give Dabo a Sweeney an opportunity to decide if they'll go for it. Now they turn it over to Jackson. So Richard Jackson from 32 yards out. This is his first start. It's certainly long enough, but it's wide right. And the pain continues for Dabo Swinney. Eleven thirty eight to play. Frustration at Clemson. The ACC is now on Facebook. Log on to Facebook and become a fan of the Atlantic Coast Conference. You get breaking news, conference updates, and connect with other ACC fans from around the world. ACC on Facebook. This school very proud of its championships. And they'd like to get back in the championship hunt. The defense certainly is trying to get them there, but Clemson's deep uh, offense rather has struggled the last several games. Yeah, Jonathan Meeks, the safety, is going to come up and fill the hole here. It's an outstanding job of getting Mustafa Green on the ground. I mean, Need to give credit. We've been talking about Clemson's defense, Tim. Let's give NC State's defense a lot of credit. After the big Gilchrist return, NC's de NC State's defense rises up and makes an outstanding stop to force the field goal, which ends up, ends up being no good. So, excellent job by that side of the football for NC State. Wilson scrambles out of there, has some running room, trying to get around the corner, and gets out to the 21 yard line. NC State at halftime, Dave. They felt like they should have been up like three touchdowns. Yeah, Clemson's defense played extremely well in the worst conditions, but at that point, Tom O'Brien's defense rose up there just a few minutes ago after the big special teams play by Clemson to get a stop. And now he's hoping that his, his quarterback can find a way to move the football against a defense that's become increasingly difficult to move against. See the scores. It's a good old fashioned Donnybrook down there in Miami. And the Hurricanes have taken the lead over the Maryland Terrapins 18 to 17. 
Here it's 13 to 7 NC State. Third down and 10 for the Wolfpack. There is movement defensively and might have gotten caught in the. Was there encroachment? And it will be against NC State. Full start, 84 offense, five yard penalty, it's still third down. Problem has been NC State has allowed four sacks, but they're right under their average. Here are the season statistics, passing yards, and you can compare them to today. NC State also has four penalties for 25 yards, so they too have hurt themselves this afternoon. Third down and 15. Throw play, Washington, absolutely nothing. Jarvis Jenkins got there first. Uh, he comes into the game as the fifth leading tackler on this team. You don't normally see a defensive lineman up in that leading tackler category. Jenkins is one of those guys that just has a knack for getting the ball carrier on the ground. We've talked about Sweezy for uh, NC State. He's another one of those interior defensive linemen. These two guys have played really high level today. Jenkins is a hole filler, run stuffer, and his weight is down as prospects are up. Andy Leffler kicking away. Marcus Gilchrist should give Clemson great field position. Inside the 40. A 40 yard punt. Well, the Atlantic Division still very much in the air. NC State trying to take that to 4 and 1. Maryland trailing Miami by a point. Parker on play action gets chased out of the pocket. And he'll go out of bounds at the 40. Quick, quick pressure by Marcus Kroon. Good job of getting pressure to the inside. And then when Kyle scrambled, they had a play action fake on. Three men in the route wanted the deep over route who was going to the right side of the field. But Parker flushed left. No one to throw it to, so he tucks it and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. Parker with a quick pass. A couple tackles broken by Jones, but never could get into that third level. Augustin made the tackle. They got a team that wants to bring pressure. Screens are an outstanding way to get after them, and they do a good job of getting the screen to Jones, but NC State is so fast defensively. If you begin to run horizontally across the field, they're going to rally to make the play. They run extremely well defensively in the defensive line and linebacker area. They need six on third down. It's going to be close. His knee touched and he should have enough. Brandon Ford had enough for the first. His knee touched before he lost ground. So they'll move the chains first down Clemson. Well they get a little bit of a mismatch with Ford sliding to the outside. He's a He's a tight end that's now playing receiver. And in fact, NC State respected him so much they just kept C.J. Wilson the corner out on him. But Ford, a converted receiver to tight end. Forward progress, gives him a first down, ball on the 29. Harper, not much. Aguio made the tackle. Got some help from Sweezy. Chad Deal comes out of the game. In the lineup now, all speed for Clemson. Hopkins, Jones, McNeil. Second down and nine. Parker throws the out. First down, 15. Marquan Jones, a gain of 13. What an excellent job of Clemson picking up the pressure. See Adi Cole and, and Nate Irvin both coming, and then Marquan Jones just runs a stop route on the sideline. But a good job by Dwayne Ford, I'm sorry, Dwayne Allen, and Jamie Harper picking up the blitzing linebackers to give their quarterback a chance to throw it. 
So that gives him a new set of downs at the 15. Deal back in the ball game takes it way out to the top of your screen. Parker looks left, looks right. Now he'll scramble, and he'll just throw it away at the feet of Harper. Good decision there by Kyle Parker. He had an out and up on the left side. He wanted to try to get to to DeAndre Hopkins, but an outstanding job of staying in coverage by the freshman Amerson. Did not bite on the out move, so there was no place to throw it there. So. Minimize the damage, throw it away. You know, Willie Korn is the guy that a lot of Clemson fans thought would be quarterback in the Tigers, but when he was beaten out by Cullen Harper, Kyle Parker then transferred, or he had transferred, and Kyle Parker took over. They thought Kyle Parker would be the next guy. Now he's going to leave for baseball, and now they're going to look to Ty Boyd. But right now it's all Parker. He throws underneath the Harper inside the 10, down to the 5, down to the 4. Tim, this is good coaching now. Remember right before the half when Clemson got down here and Jamie Harper slipped out of the backfield and nobody picked him up. Kyle Parker didn't see him and took the sack. They come right back to the same play and make sure that Kyle Parker realizes no one's taking Jamie Harper underneath. He dumps him the football and now they're inside the five first and goal. This is what they want to improve on. Inside the five, touchdown Harper! Four yard touchdown run and we're tied at 13. It's a zone play to the inside, give Harper an opportunity to run to daylight. He could bounce this all the way to the outside if he chooses to, but Nate Irving gets caught up in the trash, cannot fill the hole. And Harper hits it north and south and sticks it in the end zone and Clemson is a kick away from taking the lead. The extra point is good and the Tigers lead for the first time today. How about this Harper touchdown Clemson in the lead. No pictures on the scoreboard. Jamie Harper has some pretty good numbers he's starting to add to. Six minutes and 12 seconds to play in this game. NC State trying to quiet the crowd. Wilson. On the waggle throws deep. Almost caught by Owen Spencer and another flag. Brewer on the coverage and 29 doesn't like the call. Well it looks like we're going to get a pass interference call. I'm not sure why Russell Wilson reloaded this before he let it go. Spencer is wide open. Pass interference defense number 29 15 yard penalty first down. If we take a look at this and and look at Russell Wilson now as he skates to the outside. Let's see if he gets pressure that makes him reload. If he let, yeah, the defender got in his face just as he got ready to unload it, unload it, which allowed Brewer to get back into the play. And the bump right there is what's going to get Brewer the penalty, not the hand strip. He does a good job with the hand. It's the bump just before the ball arrives that draws the flag from Brewer. Clemson now with seven penalties worth 77 yards. Play action again. Throws underneath. Graham out to the first down marker. They'll mark it at the 48 yard line. A gain of 12. Well, Tim, how about the respect as we look at the scoreboard? Maryland's retaking the lead. Uh, how about the high scoring affair between the Cavaliers and the Blue Devils? The respect that NC State has for this defensive front of Clemson. Back to back plays with Wilson on the move. Run pass option, changes throw point, get him outside the pocket. So up near midfield, NC State's got to believe they're running downhill the rest of the way. First down and 10. Washington met at the line of scrimmage, still managed to get a yard or two. James Washington coming back from a knee injury. Uh, 
having a good year. Six foot 180 pound sophomore from Orlando Florida and they have to continue to sprinkle the run in that time they got three so that's a that's a positive pickup in Tom O'Brien's mind got to sprinkle the run in to try to slow down this Clemson pass rush. Let's see if they continue to move Russell Wilson. Throws into the flat underneath. This is Washington again, and he's become the main focus of this drive. Sets the ball, finally stops him. They'll be about a yard and a half to two yards shy of the first. Quick free release to Washington in the flat. Wilson realizes he sees zone. He immediately gets the ball out of his hands to the back of the flat. That's one of the things I love about Russell Wilson is when he sees zone coverage, he doesn't hesitate. He pumps the ball out there to his backs and gives him a chance to run. Graham goes to the top of the screen. Spencer to the bottom of the screen. Wilson will keep it. He's close to a first down, but it looks like he'll be a yard short. Yeah, again, an opportunity for Russell Wilson run pass option. This was probably design run. And a good job of Clemson hemming him back to the inside and forcing him back into the traffic. And Clemson has held him short. So it'll be fourth down and one. And it looks like they're going to punt. And Clemson counters by keeping their defense on the field just in case there's a fake. So Josh Joukowsky comes on to punt. Gilchrist is standing back at his own 10. I doubt very much if he'll get a chance to return this. This is a high knuckleball. And it'll take a Clemson bounce all the way back to the 38 yard line. Tim, that's a four yard punt. Are you kidding me? A lot of NC State fans were thinking why wouldn't they go for it on fourth and one they come out with a four yard punt. Well the, the conventional thinking is that you pin them you got a punter that's played extremely well in Leffler pin them inside the 20 yard line you have three timeouts left. You got to figure that Clemson is going to play it a little bit closer to the vest in their own end of the field with the one point lead and maybe you get the ball back at midfield but it backfires because of a horrible punt. Tom O'Brien's probably saying why did not go for it since it was only a four yard differential. Three minutes and 18 seconds to play first down and 10 Clemson with great field position. Harper right side. And a good game by Harper. He's knocked out of bounds by Emerson. Let's go down to Mike. Four weeks ago, Jamie Harper lost a lot of his playing time to Andre Ellington. He's been challenged in practice. He got to start today because of an injury. When he scored that touchdown a moment ago, nobody hugged him any harder than Dabo Sweeney, the guy who's been challenging him every day. He has answered the bell today, number eight in orange. Boy, Hog, you're exactly right. He has made all the plays offensively. Not just the touchdown run, but the dump pass that got him inside the five on the last drive. Harper, 23 carries, 58 yards, one touchdown, 313 remain. Getting the tailgating ready. Will they be celebrating? They sure hope so. They're leading 14-13 with 313 to play. And great field position for the Tigers. Second down, four yards to go. The ball at the 45. Harper again. He'll continue to be the workhorse up and over and close to another first down before Wolf can make a stop. Wait, not what Tom O'Brien envisioned when he wanted to burn his three timeouts to try to get the ball back. Two big runs by Jamie Harper to make it third and one, not even one, less than one. This good, hard physical running by the big back. Great day for football here in Clemson, South Carolina. A little bit overcast, a little bit chilly. And Clemson with the lead with 3.07 to go. NC State trying to change that and makes a stop. And that'll be a loss of a yard for Clemson. Darrell Manning has had a heck of a game made the tackle and just stood him up. What a great job of 
NC State swelling up on this play. Look at Nate Irving, 56, bottling things up down low. He won't get credit for the tackle. Manning will get credit for the tackle, but Irving blew the play up from the start, and Manning finished it off. So now it gets interesting again. Tom O'Brien didn't go for it on fourth and one. Now Dabo Swinney is faced with a fourth and short. He needs two. That'll be Tom O'Brien's last time out for NC State. But he stops the clock with 303 to play. Dabo Swinney trying to make a huge decision here at fourth well, and two. I don't think there's a decision at all here, Tim. I think you have to punt the football. The strength of your football team in Dabo's mind is his defense. And he's going to punt the football and may, let. Try to see if NC State can go the length of the field against a defense that really has played well the last three quarters of this game. Good call. Still plenty of time to play. 3-0-3. NC State with no timeouts left. High snap, wide snap, almost blocked. And caught at the 14-yard line. What a great job of catching that snap. <laughs> Zimmer just saved the game maybe for Clemson. What an unbelievable athletic play by Dawson Zimmer and then to get it off Zimmerman. I'm sorry Dawson Zimmerman. What an outstanding job of pulling that in and getting the kick away. Are you kidding me. One handed and knocked it down. Well, so now we go. Yeah Tim if you're this has a potential to be one of those career making moments for Russell Wilson. Under three minutes to play. Wilson out of the gun. Throws to the corner. It's complete and out of bounds. Stop the clock with 2.51 to play. Two yards short of a first. Jarvis Williams with the catch. This kid has an outstanding understanding of coverage. He knows when to drop it off, when to take off. Great command of Dana Bible's offense right here, Russell Wilson. Wilson responsible for more than 80 touchdowns in his career. Needs one now. He's trying to take it a few chunks at a time. Great defense. Williams couldn't hold on. Gilchrist knocked it loose. DeAndre McDaniel's safety coming on the blitz. Delivers a big shot at the back end. Outstanding throw, though. It's on the money. How about the big hit? Brewer with the big hit on the back end. And Gilchrist had his hand on the ball to knock it away. Otherwise, I think Williams makes that catch. Third down. The pack needs three. To the tight end. He's got enough for the first. George Bryan with a whale of the catch was hit immediately. McDaniel came and tattooed him. But again, the, the understanding of the coverage by Wilson, quickly the ball gets out of his hand. He understands that McDaniel's having to come from depth to pick up his safety, so he sticks his right foot in the ground and drives in the football right away to get the first down. McDaniel, a former linebacker with those cover skills of a cornerback, first down state. Wilson with time over the middle, dropped. Asa Watson had it right in his hands. It hit him between the eight and the two. Asa Watson he has one catch on the year. Interesting he would be in that situation. Well, George Bryan got up. He was injured. He was shaken up on the yep. play before that. He had to come in and fill in for Bryan and had an opportunity to make a big play. Second down and 10. Look out. Great play by Wilson. He was on his way down and he threw it out of bounds. Bowers got there again. Boy, it's been so impressive to watch this defensive front get after the passer yet stay disciplined enough. Daquan stays wide. See the pressure from the outside. Hims Russell Wilson to the inside. And then Russell has to throw it away as Daquan Bowers gets around the legs. So Bowers didn't get the sack, but he has NC State now facing a third down and 10. They're in a situation where they have two downs to pick up this 10 yards. Wilson rolls, pumps, and throws it up for grabs. Everybody goes down. 
No flags. And it'll bring up fourth down and ten. Well, Wilson gets the reload here, but this was a poor decision by Russell Wilson to throw it down the field. You have two downs to pick up ten. Really no chance there. That's a jump ball situation. Throwing it out there to Jarvis Williams. But an opportunity to take off and run with the football to minimize what this fourth down situation is going to be. Now he's fourth and long. State trying to keep its title hopes alive. Throws it all the way across the field. Incomplete. Clemson's going to win this football game. Graham had it in his hands. Well, how about the pursuit of the defensive front? This is going to ultimately be Branch and Bowers that are going to put the big hit on Russell Williams. Wilson, Branch and Bowers with a monster hit at the back end, but still Wilson's athleticism, he gets the ball on its receiver, and Graham can't, Graham can't squeeze it as Corey Sensabaugh knocks it away. What a play by Wilson to keep it alive and get it to Graham, and Graham can't hold it on. Kevin Steele thrilled with the defensive performance today. Holding a very talented and potent offense to 13 points. Tigers are going to steal one. Well, just an unbelievable effort by Clemson's defensive front. Now they got some they got some plays out of the secondary. DeAndre Matt, McDaniel made a, an interception in the end zone. But this game for the better part of two and a half quarters was dominated by the defensive front of Clemson. Maryland Terrapins 20 to 18 leading Miami. Everybody wants to count the Terps out now. No, 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 no. Here's the deal. <laughs> Florida Nobody's State. talking about Maryland. Florida State is 4 and 1. Maryland is 3 and 1 trying to go to 4 and 1. NC State will lose here and go to 3 and 2. Maryland is very much in the hunt if they can beat Miami. Clock down to 105. 60 seconds remain and NC State cannot stop the clock. What a painful loss for Russell Williams and Tom O'Brien and Dabo Swinney's going to steal one here. Yeah, Russell Wilson, that was a moment in time to maybe really cement yourself as the ACC Player of the Year. Let's be honest, he's had an outstanding year this year. Six 300 yard games. He's got 12 three touchdown or more games in his career he's had an outstanding career just a junior but uh, a moment there taken away by Clemson's defensive front Russell Wilson plays a marvelous game number one passing leader in the ACC but Dabo Sweeney and Clemson will come away with a hard earned 14 13 win over the Wolfpack when's the last time you saw a game like that partner well, that was a good one, wasn't it? It's just a hard fight. And two, and both NC State's defense played outstanding today. Just an outstanding job of taking away opportunities, taking the football away from Clemson. So the celebration continues here at Memorial Stadium. And I think even the Clemson fans are surprised that they get away with a win 14 13 over NC State. Well we'll come back we've got the interviews for you we'll hear from the participants but after a word from your local stations. You are watching the ACC Network an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Clemson Tigers have just beaten NC State 14 to 13 and the party is just starting here in Clemson South Carolina this broadcast a copyrighted presentation of the Atlantic Coast Conference any use of this broadcast without the permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Raycom Sports is prohibited.
The sun shines down on the victors as you look at the celebration here at Death Valley. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood. All right, thank you a lot, Tim. First of all, one of the stars of the game and a very happy head coach. Daquan, I'll ask you first. That defense came up with some huge stops today. Yes, sir. You know, we just played assignment football, played with a lot of emotion and intensity, and we got the job done. What does it mean for you after last week going through some tough times, some tough losses to win a close game like this? You no, know, it, it means a lot to me. You know, uh, we struggled in the, in the beginning. You no, know, I'm just happy to get back in the win column with my team. All right, Daquan, great game today. I want to bring the head coach in here who's got a smile on his face. There have been some tough times, but I know you're proud today. I am. You know, uh, a lot of heart, a lot of perseverance, and, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we beat them all today. Yeah. Uh, it was finally good to win a close game, and, you know, I just, what can you say? I got a group of guys that just continue to fight, lay it on the line, play with passion, heart, don't quit. And, uh, you know, they don't splinter. I'm just awful proud of them today. Great job by our defense, uh, keeping us in the game the whole game, and then offense was able to win it in the end. Yeah, and your defense, especially first half, you, you didn't get it in the end zone. That defense came up with some big-time stops when they had it down in the red zone. Well, that's how you're supposed to play at Clemson. And uh, Military Appreciation Day, hey. It couldn't have been on a better day. That's how you make a stand, and uh, awful proud of these yeah. guys. This coach gets you fired up, doesn't he? Always. <laughs> I, I, I got to ask you about a couple of players. First of all, Kyle Parker came out of the game, but then he kept his head up and came back in and played well. Well, you know, he's a competitor, and, uh, you know, he, he needed to take a seat for a little while. And, uh, but he came back, and that sucker laid it on the line, and, you know, he, uh, he got it done, made some big plays for us, took a couple shots. Uh, so I'm all proud of Kyle for persevering and, and getting, a, getting a win. And, and it may have been one of the big plays of the game, your punter Zimmerman. Heck of a one-handed catch down here, and then he gets the punt off and puts him down at the 15. Yeah, he'll be wanting to play wide out next week. So <laughs> it was a great job by Dawson. Big, big, big play by him, big play. Yeah. Daquan, I know you have some very special motivation this season with going after Gaines Adams' record, the late Gaines Adams, and, of course, what happened with your dad and, and keeping his memory in your heart this season. You know, I, I dedicate each and every game to those guys. You know, they had the best two seats in the house, and I'm just proud. To, I, I'm trying to make them proud. You know, I'm just persevering and keeping it strong with my team. Thank God for Coach Swinney being behind me. Well, I guarantee you they're proud, and Clemson Nation's proud of both of you guys and this team today. All right, let's go. Let's send it back upstairs. All right, Mike, thank you very much. I turn to Dave Archer now, and I say that Zimmerman play may have been the, the play of the game. The field goal block was another one. Well, it was an outstanding play by Zimmerman to, to pull the ball in and get the ball away. Daquan Bowers, you may be looking at the, uh, the defensive player of the year. He's been unbelievable, dominant. He was challenged by his coach. He responded. And how about Debo Sweeney team? Mistake after mistake, but continuing to compete. And Tom O'Brien's got to be thinking, hey, how do we get Clemson off the schedule? That's seven consecutive losses for the Wolfpack to the Tigers of Clemson. Three or four more football games to play for each of these teams, but you still have to come to play each and every week or somebody's going to rise up. Clemson found out about that last week when they went to Boston College, and Boston College rose up and knocked off the Tigers. Same thing happens to NC State after a huge win over Florida State. Well, again, it was a unusual football game here at Death Valley. Clemson with five fumbles, two lost. They had an interception, had a touchdown. NC State had a touchdown called back. Three turnovers in all for Clemson and seven penalties. And yet the Tigers walk away with a 14-13 win against NC State.